Okay, so let's put this over here, put that over there. So we should at least, uh, if I refresh, it's gonna be slow. It's gonna be slow. Yeah, a little slow. <laughs> uh, oh, right, right, right. So we've not actually hooked up. So it's not enough just to create, to create the files. It's not that quite that uh, um, magical. Uh, and right now we gotta go into app.tsx and we have to define that resource. So we're gonna create a, um, name series dot 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 series. Use. Yep, like that. And then we'll import that from uh, our new folder. There we go. Series views from resources series. Yeah, quite slow at the moment. But oh, it was there for a second. I didn't, I didn't give the, uh, the hot reload enough time given uh, how busy everything is. Let's see, what is Docker telling me right now? Did we see, let's put that over there for a second. Yeah, I mean the containers themselves aren't using any uh, CPU. It's the the build process. All right, so we got a we got a series. Now this is not going to work, right? Because um, the service hasn't been restarted. It's still building the container. So yeah, that's going to fail. Because the API endpoint doesn't exist yet. Uh, but once the build finishes, that will exist, and that'll give us the ability to like create a series record. Um, I guess we can just keep on marching forward though on. Uh, hooking this up, right? So in the episode, edit, probably in a few places, right? So, oh, let's, let's do a little bit of bookkeeping here. Oops. Too many windows open. All right, so if we go back to the project planner, uh, video series episodes have ability to schedule for, for videos to be published. Link, uh, ability to link series record to YouTube playlist. Manage YouTube set. Okay, so I'm gonna say so that ability to have scheduled for videos to be published is gonna go into into this task. It's, it already is that task, right? So I'm gonna take this one, and I'm gonna change this one to be just a more general. Uh, having uh, four episodes. Okay. So this would be the, just the general, okay, the record exists, we can see it in the UI, we can see it associated to episodes, uh, those, that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna create, current, convert it to an issue so I can refer to it. So I have an issue number, uh, and then <laughs> Nothing funny about that at all. Uh, and then I want it to be in progress. There we go. Although if I would just open a PR referring to issue number 69, then it would have automatically gone to in progress, but whatever. Uh, let's just hide that because it's slow. Okay, so let's think about this. Do I want where? So on the episode record, there should already be a reference to the series. Like we have a series ID. Now going back to the back end, are we servicing that information? Like if I get list, does episode simple view? Okay, it's just gonna be faster for me to go there. 
Does episode simple view have the series ID? No. So as it is right now, the list view will not be able to surface the series. Does the episode detail view have the series? The oh, it has a stream ID. It doesn't have the series ID either. Okay. So great. And create episode request doesn't have the series. Update episode request also does not have series. So uh, we're gonna have to rebuild again. Fortunately, it should be faster. Um, the reason this is so slow is because probably there's been a new Rust image and I'm just using latest. Which means everything has to be rebuilt, which is a little slow. Okay, so let's, let's, let's say, I think it could be really useful to have the ability to see on the list of episode, uh, yeah, the list of episodes, which series it's for. And to be able to filter on that and be able to, when creating the episode, to attach the series ID to it in addition to updating it. I'm, I'm, I'm putting aside the question of like, okay, well we have a thing to bulk create episodes from a stream. How is that going to put the right um, series ID on it? I'm just gonna ignore that for now. That'll be like a manual thing. There is a bigger like thing I need to do where we're gonna create a, a more custom UI with a workflow that's gonna like handle this and it's gonna connect the dots. So this is all just like, it's not the, it's a, it's a, um, it is really the administrative interface to be able to like edit the records and stuff. Uh, and kind of it's sort of like a test bed, right? So if I can have the data and I can have a place to like trigger the job to like do a thing, uh, like use GPT for turbo to generate a description. Uh, then, you know, once I can prove out like all those things working, then we can build a better UI until I wire it all up, uh, nicer. And that may entail like backend changes to make things work, but you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So the, I think I've convinced myself that what I want to do is I want to include the uh, the, the series ID so option of a string because it's optional right it's an optional uh, field and let's look at um, is it schema yeah. So yeah, ep episodes have a series ID and it's a nullable UUID. Uh, order index is interesting. Maybe we want to surface that too while we're at it. Yeah. Probably. I don't know. Can the front end like if we go to episodes, we can sort, right? Can we sort by multiple things at the same time? Not by default. Is that a thing that React Admin can do? Sort by multiple columns. Stack overflow from, from 2018. The request to have this feature was closed. We won't support it in the core. Write your own data grid. Hmm. Maybe it was reopened. Yeah, 
So... You embed multiple fields into fields, multiple orders into order. <laughs> uh, yeah. So now, which is... Let's think about that. So the reason this came, like, like, why, why did, why am I thinking about this? Well, if we're gonna have, if we're gonna have a series ID, and then we're gonna have a thing that's gonna let us order things in the series, right? Because there's a definite order, right? <laughs> um, then if we're going to have a list view of, well, okay, here's what you do. Here's what you do, right? If you want to see all the episodes of a series in order, you either have a view embedded inside of the part of the UI for the series that shows the episodes, or in the episodes list, you have a filter, you filter for a particular series, and then you sort by the whatever, it is, whatever, whatever it's called, order index. Yeah, order index, okay. But we still want to surface these values. Was it an I-32? And four is I-32, yeah, okay, great. And then uh, we wanna have the same thing in the detail view. Is stream ID not, isn't that? Hold on. Stream ID? Oh, it's not optional. Probably should be optional. Right, okay, in this data model, episodes are not directly linked to a, um, to video clips, right? To the underlying media. They're linked through the, uh, uh, the stream. So probably what I would want to do in the long term to like address like non-streaming video capture processing is probably rename stream to be more like, um, I don't know, recording session, something like that. And then maybe adjust some of the fields, maybe, uh, you know, some things. But this, this is fine for now. It's gonna get the job done. So series ID, we're gonna get from episode series ID, order index. So that should make this happy once it, once I save it and uh, Rust Analyzer catches up. Probably should not have clicked that. Okay, cool. Uh, series ID, yeah, but it's right there. It'll, it'll eventually catch up. Uh, and then in the detail view, we just do the same thing. Uh, not that, I must not have copied this. There we go. And then in create episode request, uh, I also want the uh, series ID and the index. Um, this should also be an option. Yeah, there you go. Like, I don't want to mandate that. Is that that's going to break the uh, the bulk create button. And I, I don't want to be forced to change that right now. And then um, update episode requests. So being able to update those fields. We also want to do that here. So, yeah. Good. Hey, uh, research dev, welcome in. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I have this uh, set of uh, Rust API microservices. So I've basically lumped all of the things interacting with my Postgres database into like a, a CRUD API. 
and then I have a few other that are doing like uh, audio processing, um, doing silence detection, uh, speech to text transcription. I have like a task uh, API that works with Redis and then a task worker that basically interacts with the other microservices. So all the backend stuff is in Rust. And then the front end is uh, TypeScript and React. I'm using a, a library called uh, React Admin to make like an admin interface. It's uh, all part of my little open source project. Uh, all right, so this needs to be Wait, order index is not optional? That's interesting. It's not optional. Is there a default? I've been creating episodes and I have not been populating the order index. Uh, is, there, is there a default on that? There must be. Where did I define that, that table? Yeah, it defaults to zero. Okay. Sounds like a great project. I'm working on uh, mine currently, the WebSocket server. Having a blast. <laughs> no, it's, uh, oh boy. Yeah, uh, WebSockets is definitely on the list uh, because, where is the front end? There it is. Um, so I have this little bit of UI, custom UI for checking on tasks. Uh, but you have to click refresh or the, you know, the page has to refresh, uh, to know that, oh, my task finished. Like if I'm, uh, uploading a video to YouTube, I, you know, I have to check on it. I would like WebSocket and like, uh, browser notification integration, all that stuff. So that's on the, uh, that's on the backlog. Uh, there we go. One of, one of 39 things. I think it's somewhere somewhere here near the top. There we go. But yeah, so this is all part of the, uh, oh, this, this still fail. Yeah, that's what I'm handling notifications at the moment. I eventually want chat and other bits. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I have, oh, is this still broken? Oh, right. Okay. Well, that, that'll, that'll auto merge once I merge the other thing that has the fixes for the, the GitHub actions, which is in this other PR that I'm working on. Yeah. Deployment updates, PR notifications, etc. I see. I see. Um, one of the things that I'm eventually going to do with this is have more like direct Twitch integration, like, um, because this, this, this project is uh, kind of the, the idea is it's, it, well, it says right here, managing stream recordings, but I want to have like a full workflow thing that takes through like, uh, starting a stream all the way to like, um, scheduling videos, like episodes that are generated using AI, uh, and with some supervision, uh, to YouTube from those recordings, from those, the streams. And, um, Part of that is going to be like integrating into like Twitch APIs. Uh, it's going to be like scraping uh, chat to use to like know what's going on. Uh, and then thank you for the follow, <laughs> research dev. Research underscore dev just followed. Uh, do you stream too? The project that you're working on. Uh, looks like no, but, uh, but yeah, that, that's the kind of thing. Like, um, I think I have something in my list for like, I do have some stuff where it's like more like, uh, integrating with OBS. Um, I have a separate application that does some of my OBS, like countdown timer overlay stuff. Like it's a separate front end, uh, Veet app. So I might roll some of that into this just to make like one whole streaming uh, content creation suite out of Glowing, Glowing Telegram. 
or I might figure out how to like split that into multiple projects that can be deployed into one thing. I don't know yet. Uh, I think there was something on the list though. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Import more historical information from Twitch streams. There was something about like having a, like a live overlay as well that would give me metadata. Like Twitch is nice because like I can see in the stream manager uh, when you chatted for the first time that you never chatted before, but yeah, not very vocal while developing, usually take, make, taking notes and jumping between, between spreadsheets. Yeah, I um, I don't know when it happened. Somewhere along the line, <laughs> I, I became, I, I guess it's one of those things like um, the, there's this thing that people talk about doing Although I don't know how many people literally do it, but rubber duck coding, where you know you're trying to work through a problem and you uh, you you have something that you can like treat like a person that you can talk through problems with, um, and at some point that just became my default mode of like talking through problems and just talking what I'm doing, and uh, that just kind of pivoted into like doing streams about stuff pretty easily. Okay, so we have a default of zero. So that's why things are working, even though this is not optional. Um, what do I, I want to do about this? I could... One option here is that for the things that we are serializing to send back to the client, I could just make it an integer and not optional. And then on the ingestion side, wherever we're representing that, where we're doing deserialize, right? So create episode request, then this would be optional. So that has the benefit of not breaking existing things. And then representing the fact that even if you don't send something, you are gonna get something back, which is the reality of the situation. So I kind of like that. So I think I'm going to do that. So that means that this episode detail view uh, is always going to return an I32. And so is the simple view. And so then this, this works. And there aren't any more complaints. Okay. Is there anything else I need to do here on the back end? I kind of want to figure that out so I can trigger another build. Um, is there anything else I need to do here, like on the episode? So like get list just auto does things. Get one um, should also still work because it just pulls all the columns and then it filters it through uh, episode detail from uh, episode detail view from. Uh, so maybe that's it. I do want to do, oh yeah, filtering. Does our get list, oh yeah, we're using this macro for episode. Um, I think this macro, if I want to filter by other things, I need to just pass the column name. Is that what is going on here? Well, that does ordering. It lets me sort by things. The indentation here is wrong. This should not be indented. Uh, okay. Yeah, but we only have an ID filter here. This macro does not handle uh, configurable additional filtering, right? It does not. Okay. So for now, uh, I'm just going to leave it like that. And then at some point, I probably will ditch the use. This is what I've been doing after I, like, I made everything use this, uh, I made this create list handler macro, like to generate the code for these list views. But uh, it's not good enough, and I don't. <laughs> I've not. Uh, I don't know 
that I know how to make it good enough. I might like, um, I have uh, like in stream, get list. I have a big old thing that's doing a lot of work. Maybe I can, maybe I can have the convention be to create something like this function, create predicate, and then pass that into the macro. But then I still have things like getting counts of things that are still kind of custom. So I don't know. Don't know, but let's just build. Run compose up again. It hopefully will be faster this time. Have a lot of cached stuff. Um, okay, so what next? I guess looking at the UI, uh, so we should already be able to look at the series list. That endpoint should exist. Yes, and there's no data, great. So let's create a series. Uh, and the series is gonna be, uh, let's see, let's go back. Let's do Power World Multiplayer since I have that. Uh, let's see. Should this be required? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be lazy. Save that. That's, um, there we go. The description is blank. That's not right. I'll fix that. Uh, also, the series create. Hmm. Description input should be like multi line. It is. Okay. All right. We've not hooked up that FU yet. That's right. That's right. Why is there a description though? That should be there. Okay, so get series, response, title and created, but no description. But I gave a description. And create source description. Hmm. Did I miss that in create? Body that description, unwrap or, okay. So that should have inserted that into there. So maybe it's on the, on, on coming back, hit one. Series all columns. And we do series detail do view from. I have a description. Uh, oh, right. So series detail view, series simple view. I guess I want description here as well. Which uh, probably is not going to make it. Oh, I see. I don't, I don't have description in simple view. Which uh, is a problem because in the list I'm showing description. Um, you know, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't want that. It, maybe I'll uh, I'll go the other way, right? So we'll say in series list at TSX, there will not be a description. I'm trying to come up with credit tiers for subscription packages is rough. Yes, you really gotta know your like your customer base <laughs> how are they going to respond to uh the tiering yeah i worked at a startup at one point where um we had like a free tier which was to encourage like people to like 
code against our APIs. Um, it was pretty like it, it was a tier that had like a cap, like a usage cap. The issue was that people were like had were getting value out of that at a really low usage cap. It was still good enough for what they were trying to do. And they were like doing production stuff with it. Uh, but, you know, we weren't charging them anything because it fell under the, the dev tier. And so there was contention around well, should we not have, you know, a free tier? Uh, or, you know, what are we gonna do about that? <laughs> I don't I don't think uh, we really ever resolved that issue before that startup no longer existed. Mm. Okay, we get create, we get edit. Edit lets us uh, edit the thumbnail URL. We don't really have that wired in. At some point I'll need like, uh, um, some kind of media management thing. I'm really cheating right now in a way because I'm running everything locally. And so like all of the media files are just like in a Docker volume that, you know, wraps one of my hard drives where I'm storing all the, the like stream recordings and all the renders from uh, DaVinci Resolve and all, all of that stuff. So I can just pass around like a URI that represents a path internally um so i'm not uploading or downloading things hey brainless good morning how's it going um so the other thing so we have the the series create edit list um and the index.csx yeah we'll pull an edit now All as well, just waking up, how am I? Oh, uh, good, good. I um, was up late last night watching uh, watching Dune 2. I, I didn't get a chance to see it in theaters, uh, as it turns out, so, uh, but I did buy it, so. But of course, after dinner, I was like, oh, what to do? Went and, um, it's like, okay, we'll have to go watch the first one again uh, to, you know, have the full experience, right? So watch the, the, the first part uh, and then the second part. And that was like, that got me to like midnight. And then I actually changed my alarm to wake up at like 7.30 uh, so that I would wake up in time for the stream. But I ended up waking just a few minutes after, you know, I usually would. Uh, anyway, so I got a little less sleep than normal, but I'm fine. <laughs> and research dev says, yeah, I won't have a free tier because the nature of infrastructure hosting, I want to make the personal tier sufficient enough for single service, front end, back end hosting. Base cost of instances is uh, 750 plus $16 for load balancing. Also credit allocation for something else I see. I did the contrary, played RimWorld at 5 a.m. Nice. Yeah, I still have my other save that I'm playing out. Um, where I'm not doing any of the, I'm not doing any of the uh, um, anom anomaly stuff. Just like, just um, kind of focusing on the other DLCs and just like playing more of that. I might do that after the stream and after lunch. Okay, so this is updated. So that will get us our access to our edit view. Uh, then the other thing to do is on the episodes, I probably want to, I want to show the, um, what series the episode is from, right? That's what we're, what we're building right now is the backend changes for that. So for the episode list, um, I don't think I want to show the description actually. It's very long, um, but I want to show, how do we do this? Is it reference field? Reference field. Yeah, from React Admin. Series, references series. 
and then text field title. Yeah, that looks right. That could that could be right. Now this is not going to work right now. I think until the the back end is rebuilt. But uh, like if we go over to oh, it's also not going to work because I don't have any episodes that are associated to series. So let's um, let's make it possible to edit an episode and add the series. So this is gonna be like a reference input or something, however this works. We'll put this um, maybe after the title. Yeah, reference input. Yeah, select input. So this would, this would just give us a drop down, which is gonna be sufficient. I'm not gonna have that many series. Maybe at some point I'll need like an archive feature or something for this to hide old things. But for now, this is probably gonna be, gonna be fine. So then I'll go back to episodes. And then we'll go into here. And then, let's see, are we trying to pull the list of series okay we have a drop down there we go okay that part works right because this is not about the uh, episode crud API stuff this is about pulling the list from the series um, crud API like the get list view uh, endpoint so now I can associate this with uh, the series. The other bit that's missing here is I need the order index. Uh, so this would be like, is there a number input? <laughs> yeah, episode number probably would make sense, but I called it order index. Is it number input? No. Uh, it might just be text input. File, text, time, array, image. There is number input. Or is there? There is, okay. Uh, do I want that in the list view? Probably. Is there a number field? We're imagining one. You would think there would be for consistency sake, but Seems to think so. All right, so now we have an order index. I don't know what order it is. <laughs> the, um, yeah. But if we go to like this one, I can say, oh, this is power of multiplayer. And uh, I have a number here, 15. So I'll just call it 15. Now, is this gonna work or is this gonna error? It depends on if the backend is updated yet. All right, so we just put, and the put includes, um, oh, that's, that's response. Request, order index 15, series ID is that, but the response doesn't have that. So the backend probably, I guess our API doesn't reject unknown inputs, which is probably for the best. But it's not in the response, so probably, yeah, we're still building. Okay, so that didn't actually save. Hmm. 
Oh, and everything is so slow right now. Yeah, so that, that hasn't saved yet, but the, the idea will be that I'll be able to do this. And then if I go back to the episodes list, then we'll be able to see which series the episodes are. Uh, and I guess, oh right, I don't have a filter here, right? That, that was the thing that I said I would do later. I gotta redo the, the list endpoint to support filtering. So we'll, we'll do that at some point. Oh, I think the, the container just restarted. There it is, okay. There we go, and now we have order index. Well, we don't have a series. So let's, let's change that. Let's do the thing I just did a minute ago. This will be 15 and save. Uh, and it did nothing. <laughs> uh, okay, in the response. Okay. So series ID null. So the, did that just not save or did our, that did not save, but it was in the request. It was, huh? Okay. Well, let's, let's troubleshoot this. Uh, or were some of the changes after I had started the build? Who could say, <laughs> who would say, uh, okay, so episode structs create uh, update episode request that has a series ID and order index. And then this is being used in update. Uh, update cha uh, episode change set doesn't have those fields. So that's that's the that's the gap. Um, no, we're not updating updated that. There you go. And then order index, which should also be optional. So we can optionally update fields. And then now we have to update this. This is where, you know, I could do the same thing I'm doing other places where I could implement from for this or to. Yeah. I could, I could implement a thing so that we could move the, this logic somewhere. And then like, then the handler itself would know very little about like the work to be done here. And that is, I kind of, I feel like that is the right direction to move in, but uh, we'll do that later. Uh, okay. So that is the missing bit. <laughs> what about in create? Do we need to do something in create? No, we did that part. Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, this is where I'm setting it to zero. Do we, um, I didn't change create episode request though, did I? No, I did. Okay. So let's, let's update this to be like this. Um, let's see dot unwrap or there we go. So it defaults to zero of not provided, which is duplicating what we're doing in the database, but that's fine. I have to re-trigger another build because it's not going to pick up those changes. Okay. So all of this is to have a, like a, a place to put settings that are in common between all the episode video, uh, all the episodes that I might want to upload to, to YouTube. Right. So if I go here and I'm like, okay, I've prepared all these episodes. Some of them are for this series and some of them are for that series. I can select everything and I can say upload to YouTube and it'll, it should, you know, once all of this is built out fully, it should do the right thing. It should take the videos that it uploads and it should attach them to the right uh, playlist. It should categorize them correctly. Um, whatever else I want it to do. Uh, and then, yeah, series. So then I can create another one. Um, we can call it uh, glowing. There we go. <laughs> 
I typed this text uh, here. Oh, server, service restarted. Goodbye. Uh, glowing. Yeah, there we go. I might just call it glowing telegram project. Something like that. Nah, I don't know. I don't know if I really want the description to be uh, required, but I don't know what the error was about. What was the error about? 404 on uh, record series. Oh, the record hadn't existed yet for a split second. Nope, oh, it doesn't exist anyway. That's interesting. Record, series, it doesn't exist. What about this one? Okay, interesting. Let's uh, rebuild everything again. Series create. Should do the right thing. Uh, right, so create series requests. Yeah, the description is optional. This is on, on the front end. The front end is saying that, oh no, it's required. It's not actually required. It will default to just an empty string if I don't provide it. So let me just update series create. Description is not required. Same thing on edit. So why does this fail? API record series get. Okay, so let's look at the back end again. Handlers series get one. We have from the path the record ID, which is a UUID, and we're looking for a series where the ID matches, and we're getting all columns. It's the same thing as we're doing everywhere else. Could the route be not set up correctly? Yes. Right, so this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It's like two sets of routes, one with, with the ID and one without. And instead, I'm not. So let's let's fix this. Series get list is for this path. Create is when you post to that path. Uh, get one is when you get to this path. Update is when you put to this path. Delete is when you delete this path. Should be good. Um, ah, missing a pair in there. I accidentally deleted it when uh, <laughs> I think I hit delete like somewhere like that. Yeah, anyway. Is there a way to make the overlay stuff go away? Interesting. 
Yeah, I don't think I know the actual like term for the stuff that's being displayed here in line. That's not actual text. That's part of what I'm editing. Hmm. So is this is this coming from Rust Analyzer? Like if I were to stop Rust Analyzer, would uh Okay, then it goes away. So it's coming from Rust Analyzer. So there's probably a setting. And Rust Analyzer. Expression fill default. Placeholder expression to use from this expression assists. Okay. Priming, cargo, cargo. Let's make some more room here. Uh, build finished. Check that in a second. Uh, is it coming from check? Features. Maybe not. Completion. What does it mean when completing functions? Huh. Debug? No. Diagnostics? No, probably not. Files? Highlight related? No. Hover? No. Imports? Inlay? Is it an inlay? Is that what we're talking about? I don't know. If there was like a, a thing just to turn it off, <laughs> then uh, that would be easier to tell, wouldn't it? But I don't know. I'll probably do some Googling later. Let's, let's move on. So. So this should work now? Oh, right, no, no, I have to build again, <laughs> right? I, I made changes, and, but the, the previous build had finished, not the one after I made changes. Okay, well anyway, so this should get us to the point where we can go into episodes and actually save a change. Uh, 15, save. Saved it there. If I go back to the list, there it is. And you can even like click the record, and it takes you to the the series for what that's worth. Uh, back to episodes. There we go. So eventually, at some point, I want to have a filter. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I want to have a filter here to filter for a particular series, and then we can, I can sort by order index. I don't think this works right now because uh, it's not a list of sortable columns. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, what was the <laughs> how, what is done here? Um so we'll we'll check that everything is hooked up properly, but I think in terms of having a video series record for episodes, I think this is good as a start. There are other things on the to-do list that I might actually move up. So let's sort this again, uh, filter this again. 
There's some stuff about series. Uh, the Lily Link series record by YouTube will hit playlist. So I think this one, I'm gonna... Oh, I, I, can't, I can't move it to the top in this filtered video, unfortunately. That's that's annoying because that means I have to like find where it is in the list to move it. Yeah, so now I have to find it first again, but I can't use filtering because then I won't be able to order it to the top of the whole list. found the problem. <laughs> I guess uh, what you do in this circumstance is you don't use ordering, you use like priority flags. I don't like doing that. I, I would much rather just have a, uh, a rank ordered list. This will save me like two clicks per episode. Uh, okay, so here we go. So we should be able to go to series and click in and have access to that. That was broken before and we can like delete it too. Uh, I'm actually gonna, let's just create a test one. Hey look, description's optional now too. Cool. So if I reload, that record actually exists. Uh, and I can delete it. And it's gone. Cool. All right. So that is a thing. Uh, that we were supposed to be working on in a branch. There we go. Fixes number 69, video series record for episodes. Uh, so that's all the stuff. Here we go. Ship it. Ship it nowhere because we're not deploying it anywhere, but... Uh... Cool, let's get that PR open. Um, this won't auto-merge because I've broken the build process. So what I wanted to do, this is tangent, sort of. I mean, it's a continuation of the thing that I was just talking about. <laughs> so the, um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have it so that if you were changing front end stuff, the front end uh, action would run. So like check front end stuff and you were checking. If you were making back end changes, then the back end stuff would run. It seems that, all right. So, but I changed both. So both should be running. Hmm. The issue though, regardless of that, that specific case, the issue though is that I made it so that both of the checks are required. So what I really need to do is I need to have the action like run. Uh, here, let, let's go to the workflow. GitHub Actions, how do they work? So I have these two workflows. I have a front-end workflow and then a Rust workflow. And then on main currently, it's set up so that it, it cares about certain paths. So this is a mistake. Like instead of doing this, because what's gonna happen is, is that like I'm expect, uh, like I have a condition that says both of the workflows need to succeed to uh, allow the PR to be merged. And that's a good thing, except that um, I don't want to run Rust checks on a PR where there's no Rust code, like no backend code changes. And I don't want to run front end checks on a PR that has no front end changes. I decided there's probably a place for like an integration test sort of uh, setup that like checks both. I don't know, runs. Um, uh, what, what, what's a, like a ETE uh, UI framework thing that we could run? Um, pl 
play something or other. Anyway, doesn't matter. Play right? No, that might, that's not right. Uh, anyway, so, but for these specific workflows, I would want them to not run. And that, that's the trap, right? Is that I do actually want them to run. I want them to succeed. I just don't want them to do anything if there are no changes to the front end directory. So what I need to do here probably is have a step here that's like, oh, did you change anything in the front end? No, okay, then succeed and then just stop. Um, we could probably do something like that inside of the, the job. I don't know, but currently, I was trying to like have the workflow only run at all when there were front end changes. Uh, and that, that breaks things. Which is why <laughs> these things are hanging out. Now separate from this, this is interesting because there are back end changes, right? There are non front end um, changes in this in Cred API, but the, the other workflow didn't trigger. Rust one, right? Paths not front end. Maybe this is not sufficient. Maybe this needs to be like star slash star star first and then not front end. Maybe that's why. Maybe this just never runs for anything unless it's a GitHub workflow change. Anyway, in one of my other PRs uh, where I was actively working yesterday, I, I did fix this. Also, timeline, it's being worked on. Oh, I showed this at the beginning of the stream. But this, is, it, it does support having like multiple data sets shown in it. Anyway, uh, it's time for me to stop streaming <laughs> and get some lunch. So um, let's do this.